John 5, verse number 1. John 5 in the New International Version says, Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is Jerusalem, the sheep gate, a pool, which in Arabic is called Bethesda, Bethesda, which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me to the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then last verse, then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. Can you just go to verse number two for me in the King James Version? It reads, now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. Look at somebody and say, it's risky business. Sit down. Look at somebody and say, it's risky business. You mean risky business. Risky business. If you talk back to me, I'm not going to be longer than your pastor. Because he told me how long he's up and I don't want to be up longer. And I need to get home to see the Cowboys lose. <laughs> Go back and get anointed. Let's go. A uh, people of God, don't let that stop your amens. You might miss it. Um, people of God, I want to caution you, let you know that you have purpose. But I need to caution you on the flip side that it would be ministry malpractice for me to tell you that and not tell you that purpose is God's preference for us. It's what he wants to do. It's what he desires to do. It's what he's willing to do. Um, um, it's, it's, he's willing to part red seas to make it happen for you. He is willing to make ravens feed a prophet to make it happen for you. Because remember, birds don't feed people. But when God is determined to do something in your life, he will make something or someone act inconsistent in their nature to get it to you. The reason why you miss it, I just told you that God, we both, both ministries are expecting something. We are expecting something bigger. We, we are needing something greater. And I just believe just right now, this is not in my notes. I believe that God is going to use somebody that we don't know to give us both what we need. Yes, here it is. Here it is. If, if God is willing to make someone act inconsistently just to get it to you, it means it is his preference. And then watch this for that. But in that order for his preference to be manifested, it requires your participation. Yeah. Just give me a few moments and I'll get through the intro very quickly. In order for God's preference to become manifested, it requires your participation. Yes, let, let me start by telling you, watch this, and reminding some of you of an axiom that I articulate often. It can be captured. Watch this. I want to tell you that frustration. I, I, I heard this from my spiritual father. He said, Clark, the reason why you need to be glad is because God is frustrating you in this season. I'm like, Pastor. I don't like to be frustrated when I'm frustrated I mean I don't like to talk to people I, I, I just I just give directions I don't say good morning I don't say good night I just do it I here it is because watch this when you are frustrated frustration will allow you sometimes to never change locations I, 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 without frustration you will stay stuck on the porch without without frustration frustration is something that God uses to remind us that something is out of alignment and here I want to tell you that I came to tell you this afternoon that sometimes you have to be glad that God frustrates you emotionally he he frustrates you relationally he frustrates you professionally he frustrates you financially because what God God is getting ready to use based on your frustration this year alone. He's used it to break you for elevation in 
your life. Here, here it is. If you would not have been frustrated, then that means God wasn't going to do something above average. But is there anybody in the room early in the intro that can say, God, you frustrated me so much this year that I'm getting ready to step into something uncommon. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I, I said, if God has frustrated you this year, you ought to look at somebody and say, God is getting ready to give you something that's uncommon. Y'all, in this, in this season coming up, um, um, you cannot listen because your leaders, I know him, I know him. He's allergic to average. Yeah. We're allergic. We don't, we don't, we don't like medi mediocre things. We, we, we want excellent things. We want things to be over the top. And in this season of your life, you cannot allow jealousy to keep you on the porch where you are. You've been frustrated long enough and God has frustrated you. Why? Because he's about to do something unusual. Oh God, y'all gonna make me work harder? Okay, here it is. I need to tell somebody that frustration is about to produce your elevation. Okay. Here it is. You gotta understand um, when you get agitated, when God agitates you, you got to understand that he's agitating you because watch this. He wants you to get beyond your circle. Y'all, yeah. <laughs> um, um, can I just be honest? A lot of your circle is not okay with your assignment. Okay. Everybody just look at somebody and say risky business. Okay. Um, um, a lot of your circle, a lot of your circle is not okay the way you serve God because they don't understand that the reason why you serve is because you have a promise with your name on it. And so they want to talk about your assignment, but they can't comprehend your acceleration. Oh God. Uh, all right. All right. Here it is. In this season, don't allow your circle to stop you from what God has assigned you to. Okay. Okay. All right, so God will use the frustration to show you um, where you need to be. I, I, I need to tell somebody in the room that, 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 that I came to announce tonight that God is about to do something prophetic in your life. Um, can somebody just lay hands on themselves and say something is about to break? Okay, here it is. Here it is. Um, um, here it is right here. Um, this is for five of you who are eavesdropping on the conversation. I just need those of you who believe this to stand on your feet and be like Jacob and say, Lord, I will not let you go until you. All right, y'all, let's go. Here it is. Here, here it is. As, as, as I will not let you go until you bless me. Look at somebody say the promise of God are yes and amen. Here it is. Um, Y'all, here's the issue. Here's the issue. I want to go straight to the text. I want to skip everything else because I've already been there long enough. But when you're in risky business, the issue is, is that God is trying to get you off the porch. Uh -huh. Anybody have a grandma or a grandfather that when you grew up, their life was spent sitting on the porch? They sat in a rock. Y'all, okay. They, they sat in a rocking chair. And when you pulled up, they were there waiting on you. And when you pulled up, they had a word for you. But their body wouldn't allow them to get off to greet you, so you had to greet them. Can I tell you what's getting ready to happen? What, watch this. You missed it. Watch this. Grandma and grandpa couldn't move because of their ailments. Right? You can't move because you're out of alignment. Okay. Am I okay, Bishop? Okay, here, here it is. You cannot get off the porch when your alignment is shaky. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Uh, Y'all, I'm going to make it make sense. Just hold on. Which, here it is. You, you got to understand that, that you have to get to a point that, that is not about being in the pool, but it's more about getting off the porch. Okay. Because too many of us are focused, uh, Lady Ashley, on making a big splash because we can't leave our comfort zone. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Um, um, in the text, 
Jesus does something um, very interesting um, and unusual that warrants our attention. And I'm going to do the best I can because I know who church I'm at. Here it is at the time of the feast, the feast of the Jews. Jesus, being a good Jew, has come to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast. And, and in this scene, we're introduced to a pool called uh, Bethsaida, which is the, by the sheep gate. The sheep gate is very significant because it was the gate in which lamb or sheep were brought for the sacrifice sacrifice that gave you access to the temple during the feast here it is uh, uh, here it is Bethesda was a double pool surrounded by uh, colonnades on four sides with the fifth standing on the dividing wall separating the northern and the southern pools and the five porches everybody say five porches I come back to it that were in the colonnade size with two on each side and one in the middle uh, here it is uh, uh, it's translated scholars say three ways house of mercy house of grace house of outpouring, outpouring water so get the picture y'all they are at the house of mercy but everybody is in a mess everybody. you're quiet wow. um, they at the house of mercy but ain't nobody looking like they had any mercy um, um, um. Y'all, don't be so saved that when you come to church, you act like you ain't brought no mess with you. You don't know what you did when you prophetically said, yes, you do, because that's why God gave it to you. But they don't know and understood the definition when you said, come drop it off. Because if they did it, watch this, without having the faith to match it, that means they're going to carry it into next year. So, so can we all just do me one favor real quick? Will you do it again this time, but do it in faith? Because the man of God spoke it, that what you dropped off, you got to do it again. That what he spoke in the atmosphere, that you will not carry it into. Y'all, 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 y'all got to get it. Here it is. Okay. All right. Here it is. All right. Here it is. Huh? Here it is. Somebody just said, I, I ain't taking bad stuff in the next year. Here it is. Here it is. Y'all, we, we, we have to learn how to let things go. Um, we, we, we have to learn how to, we got to learn how to come off the porch, believe our feelings on the porch. Because all of us want to be first with the title, first in the pastor's ear, first with all these things. But God ain't concerned about you being first. He's concerned about you being whole. Here it is, so. Here it is. We're at this point where Jesus come up on the scene. I know I'm boring you. I'm almost where I need to be. Um, and, and, and just go. Here it is. Um, because watch this. He, Jesus, watch what he does in the text. He walks into the crowd. He walks in a crowded place filled with people who are in need. Huh. He walks past people um, who are crippled. He, he walks over people who are blind. He ignores people who are lame just to get to that one man. Okay, they missed it, Bishop. Now, let me say it again. I said he walks into the room. He, 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 he walks past people who are crippled. He walks over people who are blind. He ignores people who are lame. Just to get to one person, you still miss your shout? Um, I dare you look at your neighbor and tell him I might be that one. Okay, all right, all right, your neighbor. Okay, who your heart? Here it is. Um, tell somebody else, um, be glad you're sitting next to me because I am that one. All of the people at the pool, don't miss this, they all have issues. But Jesus ignores, disses, and skips over everybody else that has an issue but this one man. Um, can I get about 20 of y'all who I ain't born right now? that believe that even before the year is out that God is about to skip over some people and come right to you oh, 
that I, I, I got seven people. I, 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 y'all, y'all think I need to prophetically declare in the room tonight that before the year is out, that God is about to skip over everyone in your circle. This ain't for your neighbor. This just for you. He's about to skip over everybody on your row. He's about to skip over everybody in your prayer circle. Why? Because you're daring to come off the porch. Can somebody just lay hands on yourself and shout, God, I'm that one. So my question is, uh, I'm halfway done. My question is, uh, why why him? Uh, uh, Bishop, I didn't see anything in the text that says this man had a certain level of faith. I didn't see in the text where the the invalid man... um, I didn't see anything talking about him being the son of Abraham. I I didn't see in a text about the man calling out to Jesus. He's just sitting there like everybody else waiting on the water, hoping to be first. Okay, y'all, the text doesn't give us any hints or any clues as to why. But but, but can I just please add Clark's um, spiritual supposition to the inquiry? Um, 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 This man in this condition for 38 years. Here it is. Now, if you do the math and the scholars said, here it is, that, 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 that 38 years was longer than the average life expectancy for any male in the first century in the Roman Empire. So that means, oh God, here it is. Y'all, I promise you, I'm almost there. This means that this brother had been sick literally for a lifetime. You know the reason why some of y'all don't shout? Because some of y'all been sick all your life. I'm coming. Look at somebody say it's risky business. You're like, Pastor, okay. I promise you I'm going to get to the blessed stuff. Here it is. But watch this. So many times we mismanage our blessings because we ain't willing to get risky to accept what we've done, where we've been, what we need to do to get to where God is trying to take us to go. Here, here it is. So, so here it is. So watch this. He, he knew the struggle of his condition. And, 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 and in, in, in my mind, if he's just sitting there, it would look like he's given up. He, it looked like he's given up. But I, I need to take another angle, y'all. I believe that Jesus skipped over everybody and picked this man like he's going to pick some of you. Um, I believe that Jesus was honoring how the man handled the crisis and practiced endurance. 38 years and he's still showing up. 38 years in pain and he hasn't given up on getting better. Help me God. His answer to Jesus shows us in the text that his confidence is low but at least he's still showing up. Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Equation MMC because I'm going to talk to both churches. That's all right, Bishop. Um, But can I tell you this is not the year to walk away from your church. This is not the year to stop showing up. If the body expands that you serve, that means your house expands because you keep showing up. Can y'all help each other out and say, whatever you do, don't stop showing up. The reason why you're about to be blessed in the new year is because after everything 2023 brought your way, you still showed up tonight. You, you like the man in the text. He, he couldn't quit. He couldn't stop showing up. Because he said, God, any day now. I, y'all, y'all missed that. He said, any day now. I'm, I'm looking at your neighbor and say, it's been hell on every side. But I still showed up. Je- uh, Jesus said, I'm going to come for you if you keep showing up. I know you've been through hell this year. But you never quit. You never gave up. You never threw in the towel. Because you knew any day now. He's going to show up. Okay, here it is. Um, 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 I'm run. Um, um, y'all, um, Bishop, uh, I have an incredible um, nine-year-old. I'm like A.B. Where is A.B.? In children's church? Okay, I got to take a picture with him. All right. Uh, but um, I have an incredible nine-year-old who's full of energy. And I remember when he was about five or six, um, um, he was at the house. And he was telling my daughter because they fight. And he was like, um, Nyla. He said, Nyla, um, um, daddy, 
Daddy has to bring me something. Nyla said, no, no, no. Daddy's working. Daddy's working. He said, no. He said, no, Nyla. He, she, he, she said, Daddy promised me that he was going to bring me something. And she said, but you hadn't even talked to Daddy. He said, you don't know this. My daughter told me a story. She said, she said, he said, you don't know this. And, and so Nyla said, but Nolan, you ain't even talked to Daddy because Daddy's on the plane. Nolan said, no, daddy called me before he got on the plane. He only five. She said, daddy called me before he got on the plane. And because I called him, because every time he used to travel, I try to bring him back something. So I said, Nolan, what you want? He said, a bag of chips. I said, that's easy. I got a dollar to spare, right? And so, so he said, daddy promised me he was going to bring me some chips. And, and watch this. So Nala said, no. And when I called, as soon as I said, no, Nala said, daddy, Nolan just said you were on the way. I said, what you mean? He said, I'm on the way. She said, well, I thought you was traveling. She said, but I didn't think that you had arrived yet. She said, but Nolan said you were on the way. She said, my, my five-year-old son told her, watch this. My daddy won't make a promise that he won't keep. She said, and I told him that you weren't coming, but he told me you was on the way. You missed what I just said. I'm here to tell you that what God has promised you, look at somebody and say, your daddy is on the way. You may have had some turbulence in the room, but somebody shout, daddy is on the way. He's 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 on the way. Can you prophesy to your neighbor? Just say yet. I said prophesy to your neighbor and say yet. There's a yet on your promise. There's a yet on your money. There's a yet on your mental health. There's a yet on your house. That just because it hadn't happened, don't mean it's not going to happen. Look at somebody say, it just hadn't happened. Somebody just look at somebody and just say, I prophesy yet over your life. You cannot give up. Okay. All right, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I'm born. I got to go. Can I have 12 minutes? Can I have 12 minutes? Somebody just yell, yeah. Yo, I'm holding on to a promise. I know I ain't been promoted yet. I know I ain't got the house yet. I know I'm not a millionaire yet. But my son reminded me when he was five that daddy, you can't give up. Because God, okay, is on. Would you just lean on the neighbor and say, neighbor, it's going to happen for you. Because God, I need you to shout in the atmosphere what you need God to do. I said, I need you to shout. On the count of three, I need you to prophetically scream your address. One, two, three, shout. Do it again. One, two, three, shout. Last time. One, two, three, shout. Do you know what you just did when you shouted your address? You just sent breakthrough to your house. You just sent angels to your house. You just sent increase to your house. Is there anybody in this church that can shout that just because it hasn't happened? It... Somebody shot and sold the way. Ten minutes, I gotta go. It's on the way. It's on the way. The problem is, you watch so much church online that you don't believe it when it comes out of your man of God mouth. Oh my God. But I came to clear because the man of God already said, drop it. I'm going to take what he dropped and I'm going to dunk it. Look at somebody say, it's already done. Okay. I got to go. Look at somebody say, take your shot. We're giving. It's getting risky. Huh. We're giving several descriptions. Y'all give me 10 minutes and I'm done. We're giving several descriptions. Thank you. Of the conditions at the pool. We're never told which one of the conditions the man has. Um, um, we're never told which condition 
the man has because they didn't even give the man a name. All they said is that he was invalid. He, they, they, didn't, they, they, didn't, they didn't give a name. We don't know a condition. But, but, but um, y'all, when you don't know your condition, I just want to think and say that my mind thinks that he had paralysis. If I had to pick one, why? Because what keeps you stuck is when you don't acknowledge what you need to shift. Mm, I don't know. Um, y'all, you can't function because internally you are functioning dysfunctionally. So your internal dysfunction is reflecting your external movement. Okay. Oh, there are a whole lot of you in here tonight who are paralyzed. You want to be better? You want to grow? You want to be different? You want to be the best in your family? But you keep repeating the same cycles. You want the house, but you still won't pay your bills. You want the blessing, but you won't give when you don't have it. In this season, you can't afford not to give. God, I, yo, I, I didn't, hold on, hold on, come on. You, you, you cannot afford not to submit to the assignment of God, to the assignment of your leader, to the assignment of your house, because it's going to keep you paralyzed. What good is it to run up to the altar and shout if you're going to do the same thing? Okay, all right. All right, all right here it is. You, you got to understand, um, y'all, um, Sometimes you're pursuing greater and God is trying to get you out of good. I read a book called From Good to Great. And he said, too many of you want to be great, but you don't even know how to be good. Oh, Y'all go, go read the book. Right? Because a lot of you stay stuck because you're chasing greatness. not wrong with it. But what are you doing good that's going to take you to great? You got to be faithful being good. Okay, y'all. Before God gives you greater. Y'all, greater don't come without being good. Okay, all right, y'all, all right, y'all. Um, um, so here, here it is. You got to understand that, that in the, for the sake of the text, um, I feel like he was stuck and, and Jesus was working on his mind. Because one verse says he's impotent. Um, can I tell you that impotence is the incubator for irresponsibility? Wow. Impotence is the incubator for irresponsibility. As long as you can't do it for yourself, you always blame other people for your own responsibility. You always blame the church for your own issues. Well, you don't even take notes when we preach. You can't even tell us what scripture we came from. But they got the phone in the hand. Posting on Facebook. About something we ain't even talking about. Stay stuck if you want. What's the mother that came to our church? Uh. About Mother T. Renee Glenn came. She said, Pastor, she said, listen. She said, whatever you do, she said, stay up and don't come down for nobody. Y'all, I'm going to speak for your bishop and me and for Lady Ashley and for First Lady. We going to stay up and we ain't coming down for none of you. And so if you want to come up to where God is taking all of us, y'all y'all don't like this. If you want to come up to where God is taking all of us, you got to be willing to get off the... Okay, here it is. Here it is. Huh. The question he asked in the text is, do you want to be made whole? Do, do you want to be healed? I got eight minutes left and I'm going. I promise you. Seven. Here it is because my wife going to get me if I keep going. Um, Y'all, I need to tell you, um, a lot of you have an issue because the reason why you stuck 
is you become addicted to assistance. Okay. Look at somebody say it's about to get risky. Read my mom almost there. You, 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 you become addicted to blaming folk. You become a victim to your own self. You become a victim to your own cycle. Nobody told you to do it. You did it yourself. Because you moved too soon. Okay, yeah. Y'all, some of y'all don't make it because God ain't provided. Some of y'all don't make it because you're unwilling to be faithful to take the risk that's been ordained and committed to your life. Um, y'all, you become so churchy that you have so many church rituals that you lost the art in faith of taking risks based on the promise and the man of God and the woman of God that speaks into your life. This is not the season not to do what they speak. This is a season to do everything they say. Oh, God. Yo, 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 look at somebody and say risky, risky, risky. Okay, all right, here it is. I, I, I'm, I'm done. Um, because um, um, this miracle ain't about his legs. This miracle is about his mind and his outlook. Because some of y'all walk in here, but you're still paralyzed. Some of you have mobility, but you're still missing it. I got, I got to stay on my nose. Some of you um, 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 have every functioning limb in your body, but you don't have functioning limb in your faith. Because when things get tight, you're like, I can't pay my tithes this week. That's the reason why it's tight. You have to get to a position where you're willing to let your faith become risky. Because in this season, don't become addicted to having assistance. Here it is. Um, God told me to tell you. That if you take the risk, he's going to get you up. Okay, all right, all right. You missed it. Because watch this. Some of you think because you can pay your bills on time that you still not stuck. Okay. Being stuck ain't about paying your bills. Being stuck is about, watch this, moving your mind to where you really need it to be. Because a lot of you got stuff, everything that you need, but you still depressed. Because you stuck, because you stuck on the porch. Okay, here it is. I gotta go. Here it is, um, y'all. I, I, I gotta go, um, y'all. I need you to just look at your neighbor and say, "Get risky." Okay, y'all, get out of your rituals. Get out of your mind. Get out of what your friends and your family say who don't believe what God is doing. Stop listening to them saying why you got to be at the church all the time. Why you got to answer when pastor call all the time. Why you got to be all this. Because tell somebody I got to take some risk. <sighs> Y'all. All right. I, I need you for those of you who believe this to shout. The issue is. Um, the question. The issue is. It's not is revival coming. Revival is already here. Yeah, okay. The reason. Our revival is here because you're about to take some risk. All right, y'all, I need you to do this for me. I need you to just look at somebody and say, we're about to get up now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I need you to look at somebody else because they look bougie at you and just say, we're about to get up now. Um, we, 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 we're about to have our faith lock in I need to declare to you that if you have faith and not just any faith this is for those of you who have risky faith I need you to shout I got risky faith the Bible says that now faith not, not tomorrow's faith but look at somebody say now faith here it is um, um, I, I, I'm, I'm done so in the, in, in the text he, he said uh, um, do you want to be made whole then he said, um, he said, I, I really don't have anybody um, to help me. Um, Y'all, how do I know that revival is here, Bishop? Because the man in the text is talking to the reviver. All right, all right, all right. Um, can I tell you this? I need you to hear me. Um, you don't need the pool if you have the reviver. 
I'm done. I'm done. Y'all miss what I said. I, I said you don't need the pool if you have the reviver. What's keeping you on the porch when the reviver is asking you, what do you need? What's keeping you on the porch? Okay, all right. You, you want to know the reason why I had you read the King James Version, verse number two? Because it said it was five porches. And can I just name some of your porches? You, 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 you ain't going to like this, but some of your porches are fear. Some of your porches are disbelief. Some of your porches are past experiences. Some of your porches are jealousy of other success. Some of your porches are somebody else's blessing or testimony. But I came to tell you, this is the moment of opportunity. I came to ask you the question that he asked in the text. Do you want to be made? Bishop G.E. Pastor said this and I'm done. He, he said, I want to be healed. I want to be delivered. And I want to be set free. Look at somebody and say, I know what I want. Okay. All right, they ain't believe you. I'm done. Um, look at somebody and say, I know what I want. Look at somebody again and say, I know what I want. Ask them, what do you want? Tell them, I want to be paid in full. <laughs> What do you want? Y'all miss it. You see, they don't even believe it because they get so ritual in their mind. What do you want? I, I want my kids to be fruitful. What do you want? I need a promotion on my job. What do you want? I want my mental health to be stable. Look at somebody and say, what do you want? I want the joy that I have. The world did give it and the world can't take it away. Do me a favor. Look at somebody and say, he's answering your wants. I'm going to give you three seconds to throw in the atmosphere the everything you need. One, two, three, throw it up. Yeah. All right. Okay. Here it is. I'm done. Ring, be ready. Here it is. I, I need you to do me last favor. Um, I need you to yell out three times what you want. Yell it out. Yell it out. I said, yell it out what you want. Ain't nobody going to take it. You so think you thinking that somebody going to take yours? They can't have what's yours. Stop. Oh, God. Bishop, I'm tired of hiding stuff. When God do it for me, I'm going to be humble about it. But I was, watch this, but I was quiet with my hell that I went through. So I'm going to be humble about the history where God is going. Okay. All right. I need somebody just say, I got to tell it all. Yell again. Now, what do you want? Yell it out. Say, what do you want? Miss it. Come on. This is the last thing. I'm done. I said, this last thing I'm done. I, I said, I need you to rest on your feet and yell, what do, what do you need? What do you need? Yell it out. Money, house, mind, health, cancer free, debt free, tumor shrunk, parents healthy, grandma good. If you just yell what you want, this is the last thing I need you to do. This next thing I need you to do is now thank them for it. Y'all miss it. You just yell what you want, and now I need you to thank them for it. Can I make this announcement? The thing that was carrying you, when you just thank him, you're now carrying it. And I gotta get out of here. Is there anybody in this church? that can give God a shout because what you just shouted God just gave it back to you do me a favor look at your neighbor and say neighbor y'all ain't talking to your neighbor I said do me a favor I said look at your neighbor and say neighbor it's about to get a risky in the name of Jesus look at your neighbor and say neighbor you can get back up I came to tell you before I take my seat if you ain't never been down then this ain't your shot if you ain't been through hell then this ain't your shot but for those of you who declare 
and decree that when you jump this time that what you put out for you took a risk on that God is about to give it back is there anybody in this church that can look at your neighbor and say neighbor this time when I shout I'm about to get it back do me a favor no do yourself a favor do yourself a favor and say neighbor when I open up my mouth I'm about to get everything that the devil stole from me look at your neighbor and say neighbor this next shout out of my mouth is for your victory are you ready if that neighbor ain't got no faith I want you to stand beside him cross over the aisle MMC lunch with somebody at EQ cause this time get across the aisle y'all move now I ain't got much time be obedient this time when we connect what God does in Raleigh he's also going to do in Greensboro he going to skip over Durham he going to skip over Graham he going to skip over Burlington he going to get to Greensboro and when he come back from Greensboro he going to skip over all of them just to get to us this time when you open up your mouth God is about to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can think dream or imagine here's a really body in this church that when I say now you go shout for your neighbor one two three I can't hear you I said shout for your neighbor the devil thought he had you but this joy weeping may can do it for a night but joy will yo I said weeping may can do it for a night but joy will look at your neighbor and encourage your neighbor and say neighbor let's get risky say neighbor he's able I just start right there can I tell you why you gotta shout cause he's able lean 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 on your neighbor and say neighbor I came to shout and get risky because he's he's able look down your road I ain't got nothing else y'all you so stuck but I came to the tree I ain't got nothing else for you look at somebody and say somehow the Lord is gonna do it somehow is there anybody in MMC that can give God a shot that whatever you need is in the room I need you to step out of your seat and take yourselves because the steps of a good man own I ordered I said get out of your seat get out of your seat move around because everywhere the soles of your feet tread upon God will enlarge your territory tell somebody we're going higher look at somebody and say neighbor we anyway you bless me Lord I gotta go y'all but tell somebody it got risky I ain't staying stuck Stand on a porch, but somebody shout. It just got risky. Anybody shout on a count of three. One, two. Somebody shout.
about everything. I got to go. But, but because it got risky, I need you to take 30 seconds. And I need you to break into a dance. If you up here. Not because, watch this. I said it. But because you ain't staying stuck. This for real. This ain't play play. I'm shutting off in 30 seconds. I tell you to shout now. Shout now. You got 30 seconds. I tell you to shout now. MCC, I need you to shout like everything is about to get better. Listen, look at somebody and say, neighbor, this is my last shout. Say what you shouting for. Equation, MMCC, what you shouting for. Y'all ready? Tell them I got one word. Better. You only got 30 more seconds. We gotta go, we gotta go. But when I look back over my life and I think things over, I used to be stuck on the porch. But look, this time when God asks you what you want, tell yourself I'm not gonna delay my answer. I need somebody to shout for five more seconds that is coming without delay. I said, shout for five more seconds. That is coming without delay. I gotta go. Promise is a promise. Tell somebody without delay, we gotta go. Somebody just shout, get risky, get risky. Thank you. Thank you, somebody shout, get risky. The problem is, stay standing, we're going. I apologize for talking so fast and missing the last C. But MMCC in the equation, what God is getting ready to do is going to require all of us taking a risk. We've been taking risks without you, but we don't want to do it this year. Everybody resting on your feet, we're going. Tell somebody this year we're giving it all. Listen. I gotta go. Y'all, you don't have to wait till December 31st. Why do you wait till the last day of the year to declare what's gonna happen next year? I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of waiting. Okay, I gotta go. I got one more prophecy. The dove is coming. The raven is coming. 
the dove is going to bring the peace. The raven is going to bring the increase. Y'all miss it. Because the increase ain't going to be no good if you ain't got the peace to go with it. Look at somebody say the raven is coming. Y'all missed that. I got to say it one more time. I said the raven is coming. The dove is already sitting there. If you just step off the porch, can somebody just give God a quick shout that the raven is about to come feed you? Everything you shouted, everything you declared, I'm, I'm, I'm closing, Bishop. We ain't got no time to be invalid this year. Because invalid means you're invalid. For all the people who thought you was invalid, because they thought you was invalid, God is about to give them a wake-up call. Because the ravens are coming. No, stay right there. Just stay right there. Right quiet. I prophesy that everything that you need is in this house. I prophesy that you won't be paralyzed anymore. I prophesy that MMCC is about to go to greater depths. MMCC, everything that the bishop declares is about to happen swiftly I speak a word over this house that whatever you need is about to happen I prophesy that you won't stay on the porch anymore I prophesy that you won't have to fight in 2024 the way you had to fight in 2023 I speak everything that you prayed for every vision every hurt that God does the miraculous in your life I pray that your labor that you know is not in vain I pray that God is about to give you publicly what you suffered privately I speak that next is not all the way but I prophesy that next is now if MCC do me a favor run over around your bishop I said run over around your bishop and your first lady and I need you to just put your hands towards him and we gonna say one word we gonna say now and we go into a worship on the count of three shout now one two three shout go into a place I said go in. MCC say Bishop now say Lady Ashley now Bishop my church say I just don't do this I don't just say stuff just to say it but because I know your heart because I know your authenticity and I know your labor I speak it's gonna happen sooner than faster I'll even say publicly that I hope it happens for you before it happens for me 
because if God allowed me to pour it into you and speak it come hold his hand lady Ashley that it's gonna happen for y'all before it happens for us and we ain't gonna be jealous of it because you're gonna show us how to do it I speak that it's gonna happen sooner and that when it happens God is about to give you every resource all the finances and the help in Jesus name I gotta do this and I gotta give up my space somebody shout now can I just tell y'all this what the Lord does for the business first lady he's also gonna do for you MMCC equation if he does it for us hey listen I gotta do this I gotta do this sooner 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 we gotta go somebody just shout sooner sooner or later it's gonna work in your favor hey all right come down a little bit all right listen we gotta go listen we gotta go everyone resting everyone resting I prophesy that the worrying is going to ease up. Speak to yourself, Clark. I said, I speak that the worry is going to have to take an ease. Because you worried because you stayed on the porch. Oh, here it is. God said, I'm shifting your worry into wins.